Hello everyone, this is John Hashmet and welcome to Physics Simply. In this video I will be solving the paper 2 exam for May June 2022, variant 1. So let's get started. Question 1 says which measuring device uh, are most suitable for determining the length of a swimming pool and the thickness of aluminium foil? So for a length of a swimming pool that's a measuring tape or a tape measure because it's more than 1 meter and for the thickness of aluminium foil, foil is very thin so it will be most appropriate to use a micrometer screw gauge which makes the answer B. Question 2 says a man stands next to a railway track. Uh, a train traveling at 40 meters per second takes 2 seconds to pass the man so we have speed and we have time and we need the length of the train which is distance so we can use distance equals speed multiplied by time so we multiply 40 by 2 that gives 80 meters. Question 3 says a speed time graph is used to describe the motion of an object which quantities are calculated from the gradient of the graph and from the area under the graph. The gradient of a speed time graph is equal to the acceleration and the area under the graph is equal to the distance traveled so the answer is A. Question 4 says on the moon all objects fall with the same acceleration which statement explains this on the moon all objects have the same weight that's not correct the moon has a smaller gravitation field strength than the earth yes but it does not explain why all objects fall uh, with the same acceleration uh, the weight of an object is directly proportional to its mass yes because weight is equal to mg and g is the gravitational acceleration and the gravitation field strength so a g must be constant so uh, for the weight and mass to be proportional so all objects have the same g and all objects have the same acceleration so the answer is c question 5 says a measuring cylinder contains 30 centimeter cubed of a liquid some more of the liquid is added until the liquid level reaches 50 centimeter cubed mark uh, the reading on the balance increases by 30 grams so the increase in mass was 30 and the increase in volume was from 30 to 50 that's 20 centimeter cubed and density equals mass over volume so we divide 30 by 20 this gives an answer of 1.5 grams per centimeter cubed for density of the liquid question 6 says an object on the end of a string moves in a clockwise circular path at constant speed the diagram shows the object as viewed from above what is the direction of the resultant force on the object? Any object moving in a circular motion with constant speed, the resultant force is directed towards the center. It's also called a centripetal force. Question 7 says a beam is pivoted at one end as shown. The beam weighs 6 newton and its weight acts at a point x 40 centimeters from the pivot. A force of 4 newton is applied to the beam causing it to balance horizontally. So uh, the 6 newton load uh, is causing a clockwise moment so we need an upward force to counteract this clockwise moment by creating an anti-clockwise moment so it must be upwards the force must be upwards so a and b are eliminated and we can calculate the distance from the pivot using the equation of uh, the principle of moments clockwise moments equal to anti-clockwise moments so 6 multiplied by 40 is equal to 4 multiplied by the distance from the pivot. So the distance would be uh, 6 times 40 over 4, which is equal to 60 centimeters from the pivot, not from x. So we need either 20 centimeters to the left of x or 20 centimeters to the right of x. It's 60 centimeters. This means 20 centimeters is okay, but it is to the right of x not to the left so the answer is d question 8 says on the diagram shown what is the magnitude of the resultant force of the two vectors here the vectors are drawn tail to tail so we need to close a parallelogram in order to get a resultant force and we draw the diagonal in the same direction as the arrows pointing this creates a right angle triangle here with one side 8 newtons and the other side 6 newtons and the resultant is the hypotenuse so the resultant is equal to the square root of 8 squared plus 6 squared using Pythagoras theorem and the answer would be C 10 newtons question 9 says three situations are listed an object has a resultant force acting on it a moving object experiences an impulse 
an object is decelerating in which situation is the momentum of the object is changing so momentum is equal to mass times velocity in all cases the velocity is changing a resultant force would cause a change in velocity because it causes acceleration an impulse is uh, is equal to force multiplied by time so there is also a force which changes the velocity and deceleration means that the velocity is changing so all these include change in velocity so the answer is d question 10 says a ball of mass 0.16 kilograms is moving forwards at a speed of 0.50 meters per second a second ball of mass 0.10 kilograms is stationary the first ball strikes the second ball the second ball moves forward at a speed of 0.50 meters per second so using the equation m1 u1 plus m2 u2 equals m1 v1 plus m2 v2 and taking the first mass to be m1 the second mass to be m2 these are the initial velocities u1 and u2 is equal to zero since it was stationary uh, this is v2 because it is uh, of the object of mass 2 0.10 kilograms and then we substitute by the numbers here we have 0.16 multiplied by 0.50 plus zero the momentum of a stationary object is zero equals to m1 still 0.16 multiplied by v1 the required speed uh, plus m2 0.10 multiplied by the final velocity of object 2 0.50 so we move this bracket to the other side by subtraction then we divide by 0.16 this gives an answer of 0.1875 which we can approximate to 0.19 so the answer is b question 11 says a mass hangs vertically from a spring the mass is raised to point p and then released the mass oscillates repeatedly between point p and a lower point q so the mass uh, keeps moving upwards and downwards and the spring keeps extending and contracting and the speed is also changing so which energies alternately increase and decrease throughout the oscillations for the height we have gravitational potential energy for the speed we have kinetic energy and for the spring we have elastic energy so it's not kinetic and potential only and it's not gravitational potential energy and kinetic energy uh, and internal energy it's not heat it's uh, elastic so the answer is a Question 12 says a car has 620 kilojoules of kinetic energy. The car brakes and stops in a distance of 91 meters. What is the average braking force acting on the car? We can say that work is equal to the change in kinetic energy. So force multiplied by distance is equal to the change in kinetic energy. So the, we need the force and the distance was 91 meters. The change in kinetic energy is 620 kilojoules minus zero since it uh, stopped at the end so kinetic energy uh, at the end is zero and we can then divide by 91 on the other side this gives an answer of 6813.1868 and so on we can approximate this number to 6800 which is c in this question question 13 says the diagram shows a deep reservoir formed by a dam on what does the pressure at x depend pressure in a liquid is equal to rho g h so density of the liquid gravitational field strength and the depth so the depth of the water at x yes the length of the reservoir no surface area no thickness of the dam wall no the next question says a sealed rigid container has a fixed volume the container is filled with air the container is placed in a freezer cabinet and the temperature of the air in the container decreases which row correctly describes what happens to the air in the container so the average distance uh, does not change since it's a fixed volume so no change uh, the average speed of air particles since temperature decreases this decreases the kinetic energy and decreases the speed of the molecules so the answer is d question 15 says two open containers are filled with water at room temperature the containers have different shapes from which container does the water evaporate at the greater rate and how can the rate of evaporation be increased further 
So uh, the one with the greater area would have a higher uh, rate of evaporation. So it's one, so either A or B. Uh, increasing the rate of evaporation happens either decrease the water temperature or increase the water temperature. It's increase the water temperature to increase the rate of evaporation. So the answer is B. Question 16 and 17 are removed from the syllabus, so you can skip those two questions. Question 16 says the diagram shows a liquid and glass thermometer. A student wishes to check the mark of the upper fixed point. Upper fixed point, that's a boiling point of water. Pure water, not sea water, so this is wrong. So the answer is B. Put the bulb in a beaker of boiling pure water. Question 17 says water in a beaker gains thermal energy at a rate of 3000 watts. The water is at its boiling point. The specific latent heat of vaporization of water is 2260 joules per gram. How long does it take uh, for 250 grams of water to vaporize? So we can use the equation Q equals ML or power multiplied by time is equal to mass times latent heat capacity and we need the time. So we divide the mass and latent heat capacity by the power of the heater. Here we have the mass 250 grams and we leave it grams since the unit of the latent heat is per gram and we multiply it by 2260 then we divide by 3000 that gives an answer of 188.3 recurring so we can approximate it to 188 and the answer is B. Question 18 says a glass contains an ice drink uh, on a warm and humid day. Water starts to form on the outside of the glass. What is the name of the effect by which water forms? So this is from water vapor to liquid water. This is condensation. Question 19 says one end of a copper bar is heated to a high temperature. Which mechanism is responsible for the transfer of thermal energy to the other end of the copper bar? So this is a metal. It depends on the lattice vibration of the uh, copper molecules or atoms uh, and it also depends on energy that the electrons uh, transfer when moving along the bar. So it's uh, lattice vibrations and electrons. C says a movement of high energy copper ions along the bar so ions do not move in, uh, in solids. D says a movement of high energy electrons along the bar only, not only, it also includes the lattice vibrations. So the answer is B. Question 20 says the diagram shows a convection current caused by a piece of ice placed in a beaker of water at room temperature. So the cool water uh, around the ice falls because it has lower density and the hot liquid rises. So which row correctly compares the temperatures and densities at water points P and Q? So at P, this is the bottom, we have cooled uh, liquid, so lower than Q temperature lower than Q and the ones that sink they have higher density so the density is higher than Q so the answer is C. Question 21 says the diagram shows a wave uh, this is displacement distance graph which row is correct amplitude and wavelength so amplitude is from the undisturbed position to a peak uh, crest or trough so this is one so the amplitude is one and the wavelength is between two corresponding points or two identical points like these, uh, which makes the wavelength 8. So the answer is B. Question 22 says a sound wave is created by a loudspeaker that vibrates backwards and forwards 96,000 times per minute. So we can calculate the frequency by dividing the number of oscillations or the number of waves by the time in second. So 60. This gives a frequency of 1600 hertz and the speed of sound is 320 meters per second. What is the wavelength of sound? We can use wavelength equals speed divided by frequency. So it's 320 divided by 1600. This gives an answer of 0.2 meters. Question 23 says a card is placed in front of a plane mirror so that its label is facing the mirror as shown. Uh, the label is shown here. How does the image of the label formed by the mirror appear uh, to the observer? First of all, it's upright, so the eye is not inverted. And it's laterally inverted, so these would switch places. And the C would be pointing uh, this way, not the other way. So the answer is C. 
Question 24 says, a thin converging lens can produce both real and virtual images. Which row describes a real and virtual image? So, a real image, rays converge to form the image or rays diverge to form an image. They converge since the actual rays need to intersect to form the uh, position of the image. For virtual image, image can be projected onto a screen or image cannot be projected onto a screen. For a virtual image, it cannot be projected onto a screen, so the answer is B. Question 25 says the speed of light in air is 3 times 10 to the power of 8 meters per second. The critical angle for light in a transparent plastic material placed in air is 37 degrees. What is the speed of light in the plastic material? So we have two equations uh, that include refractive index. Refractive index is equal to the speed in air over the speed in the other medium. So here it's plastic and is also equal to 1 over sine the critical angle. So we can use these two equations or these two parts of the equation to calculate what we need. So we have the speed in air 3 times 10 to the power of 8 and the speed in the plastic that's required in the question is equal to 1 over sine 37. So we can use cross multiplication. We multiply 3 times 10 to the power of 8 by sine 37 divided by 1 that gives an answer for the speed 1.8054 times 10 to the power of 8. So we can approximate it to 1.8 times 10 to the power of 8. So the answer is A. Question 26 says which part of the electromagnetic spectrum is used by a remote controller for a television? Remote controllers use infrared waves because they have a long range of frequencies. Question 27 says which statement correctly compares radio waves and x-rays? So radio waves have a longer wavelength than x-rays. Yes, longer wavelength is correct. So uh, C and D are eliminated. Uh, and greater speed in vacuum? No, not greater. It is the same speed. All electromagnetic waves move with same speed in vacuum or in air or free space. So the answer is B. Question 28 says, a student counts how many iron pins and electromagnet picks up when its power supply is switched on then she counts how many pins are picked up when the power supply is switched off so we have here uh, some pins attracted to the electromagnet when the power supply is on some are attracted still attracted with the power supply off she repeats the experiment using cores made of different materials so this core this part of the electromagnet uh, is changed with different materials which core is made out of soft iron? Soft iron is a soft magnetic material, easily magnetized, so it would attract a large number of pins when uh, the current is on, and easily demagnetized, so it would lose all magnetization when uh, the current is switched off. So the answer is D. It attracts the most number of pins when the current is on, and then uh, no pins are attracted at all. It loses uh, its magnetism completely when the current is switched off. Question 29 says, a plastic rod is brought near to a small plastic sphere suspended from a stand. The sphere is repelled by the rod. Why is this? The rod and the sphere have like charges. Yes, that's correct. Uh, unlike charges, no, they should attract. The rod is uh, charged and the sphere is uncharged or the rod is uncharged and the sphere is charged, any uncharged objects placed near to a charged object, they would attract eventually due to induction. So the answer is A. Question 30 says, which unit is equivalent to a volt? A volt uh, is uh, referencing to potential difference or voltage. That's energy per unit charge. So the unit of energy divided the unit of charge, joule per coulomb. So the answer is B. Question 31 says a resistor converts 360 joules of energy when there is a current of 3 ampere in it. Uh, the potential difference across the resistor is 6 volts. For how long is there uh, this current in the resistor? So we can use the equation for energy equals VIT and we need time. So we divide the energy by the potential difference and current. So dividing 360 over 3 and 6 this gives an answer of 20 seconds so the answer is b question 32 says the four circuits shown each contain four diodes in which circuit is the direction of the current in the resistor always from the red terminal to the black terminal so this is a full wave rectifier in a full wave rectifier all 
dyads that are opposite to each other must be pointing in the same direction so this is a possible answer a is a possible answer b is also a possible answer since uh, the opposite dyads are pointing in the same direction uh, here it's not working and here it is not working so it's uh, not c or d and we need the current to be moving from the red terminal to the black terminal so it must be moving down from here these two diodes can allow current to flow to that point and then the current goes to the red terminal so it is a uh, in b we need the current to go in the same direction but these diodes are pointing in the opposite direction so the current is not allowed to reach this point so it's not b question 33 says the diagram shows a circuit of six identical lamps connected to a battery which lamps are brightest so the brightest lamp would have uh, the highest voltage and the highest voltage for a series connection like this this is in series with this and this uh, would be for the highest resistance so if we call the resistance of lamp PR uh, the total resistance of QR would be R over 2 since uh, identical resistors in parallel would have lower resistance and ST and U would have a total resistance of R over 3 so P has the greatest resistance and would have the greatest voltage so it would be the brightest lamp and uh, all the others would have lower voltages so it would be less bright so the answer is a p only question 34 is about logic gates so you can skip this for the new syllabus it says a digital circuit is made of two logic gates that's an or gate followed by a not gate which row is correct for this digital circuit for an or gate zero and zero should get zero so it's not this one 0 and 1 should get 1, so this is not correct also. 1 and 0 should get 1, so this is correct. 1 and 1 should not get 0, it should get 1, so the answer is C. And passing 1 through a NOT gate, it should be reversed to 0, so it's, uh, it's a confirmation that C is a correct answer. Question 35 says a magnet is dropped vertically through a solenoid. This induces magnetic poles at both ends of the solenoid due to the current moving uh, or induced in the coil and induced current in the coil would produce magnetic poles around the coil we have diagram one diagram two and diagram three which magnetic poles are induced at x at this point the top of the uh, the coil in diagram one and diagram three so as the magnet is approaching with an s pole the induced current opposes the motion so it would induce a south pole in front of it so for diagram one it's s pole so c or d for diagram 3, a north pole is moving away. To stop it from moving away, an S pole is induced to attract it uh, at the lower part of the coil. So the upper part would have an N pole. So diagram 3, it's an N pole. Using these, we can deduce that the answer is C. Question 36 says, which transformer can change 240 volts AC into 15 volts AC? We can use the equation VP over VS is equal to NP over NS. So VP over VS is 240 divided by 15. This gives an answer of 16. And we divide the number of turns. Here we have 800 over 40. This gives an answer of 20. B, we divide 1000 turns over 25. That gives 40. In C, we divide 2400 by 15 turns. That gives an answer of 160. And the last one is 1200 divided by 75. That gives 16, same as VP over VS. So the answer is D. Question 37 says, what is the purpose of the split ring commutator in an electric motor? Uh, does it ensure that the magnetic field uh, in the motor changes direction? No, it does not affect the magnetic field. Uh, so B is also wrong to ensure that the turning effect on the motor changes direction no it does not change direction it is to make sure that the turning effect is in the same direction so the rotation of the motor is continuous in one direction by reversing the current in the coil every half cycle so the answer is D question 38 says how do the sizes of the two nuclei produced in a nuclear fission reaction compared to the size of the original nucleus so uh, we have a heavy nucleus that splits into two lighter nuclei so 
they cannot be both larger than the original nucleus neither one can be larger both must be smaller than the original nucleus so the answer is c question 39 says which statement about the radioactive decay of a substance is correct it cannot be predicted when a particular nucleus will decay that is correct Placing a radioactive substance inside a lead-lined box prevents it from decaying. No, it does not prevent decay, but it prevents the radiation from reaching the outside of the box or reduces the amount of radiation that goes outside the box. Uh, the decay always produces uh, poisonous gases, no poisonous gases in radiation. The rate of decay increases if the substance is dissolved. No, radiation is spontaneous. It is not affected by environmental conditions. So the answer is A. Question 40 says the diagram shows a stream of beta particles traveling in a line that passes between the poles of a magnet. In which direction will the beta particles be deflected by the magnet? First of all, it's neither attracted towards the North Pole nor the South Pole. We must use Fleming's left hand rule. So for a beta particle, the charge is negative. A beta particle moving to the right means that there is a current moving to the left and there is a magnetic field from the North Pole to the South Pole. So pointing with the index finger downwards using the left hand and the middle finger to the left. So this is magnetic field and this is the current. You will find that the thumb will be pointing away from the page or outside the page. So the answer is D. So this is the end of the exam. I hope you found this video useful. I will see you in another video.